All right, I'll have the creative part two of this video. I got cut off there at the end. I wanted to finish up these last two examples. So first to find a cotangent of negative four pi over three. Now here again, uh, we're given a negative angle and um, the unit circle, the way it's, it's usually portrayed, it gives you value, um, angles between zero and two pi, no negative angles. So there's two ways you could approach this. Um, if you're pretty comfortable with the radians and reading uh, the angles on the unit circle, you could think in terms of a negative rotation. So around um, clockwise. And let me come back to that. The, the other approach, so because most likely you're not comfortable enough with radians quite yet to, to be able to visualize a negative four pi over three radians. So, uh, what, what you can do instead, if you're given an angle that is not between 0 and 2 pi, and you're looking uh, to read a value of a trig function off the unit circle, uh, we can find a coterminal angle that is between 0 and 2 pi by either adding or subtracting 2 pi, whatever seems appropriate. So in this case, uh, we have a negative angle, and we'd like it to be positive, so let's add 2 pi radians. Now to combine those, we need a common denominator. So I'll think of that as two pi over one and multiply numerator and denominator times three uh, so that I have negative four pi plus the two pi times three gives me six pi all over that common denominator of three. And so negative four plus six, that gives me positive two pi over three, which is an angle that appears on the unit circle. Uh, so I know that negative 4 pi over 3 radians is coterminal with 2 pi over 3 radians, and I can use these coordinates to get my values for the trig functions. Um, yeah, and so going back real quick to if you were visualizing negative 4 pi over 3 radians, you'd think, okay, so 3 pi over 3, that would be pi radians, which is halfway around the circle, and then another third would land me here. So if you're comfortable visualizing it that way and you land at, that, at this position that I've circled in blue, then that's great also. One way or another, you wanna get to those coordinates. Okay, so now the value of cotangent. Well, cotangent is cosine over sine. Uh, cosine on the unit circle is given by the x coordinate. Uh, sine is given by the y coordinate. And here again, um, both of these values are over 2, um, and we, I wrote this out in the part 1 uh, of this video. Uh, those halves are going to cancel, so we can think of the x over y uh, in terms of just the numerators, negative 1 over the square root of 3, because the halves will cancel. And so I'm going to go ahead and write it that way, x negative 1 over the square root of 3. Uh, and then, so overall, that's negative, well, negative 1 over the square root of 3. It's fine if we leave it written this way. Uh, okay, now to this uh, last problem, number 7, that I have below. N 9 pi over 4 radians. So once again, doesn't appear in the unit circle. Uh, 9 pi over 4 is actually bigger than 2 pi. 2 pi would be 8 pi over 4. And... Actually, here's the quickest way to think about this. So 8 pi over 4 plus 1 pi over 4 is equal to 9 pi over 4. But so that's, that's a full rotation. That's 2 pi radians. That's one trip around the unit circle. And then another pi over 4 radians. So if I put my x and y axis on here, you might be able to visualize that you're going to land at this angle at this terminal side, coterminal with pi over 4. You're going to land in this position right over here. Uh, the other way to do that, the more analytic approach, would be to take 9 pi over 4. Uh, you'd first have to realize, okay, that's too big. That's more than 2 pi. So I'm going to subtract 2 pi to find a coterminal angle. Multiply top and bottom by 4, and you have uh, 9 pi minus 8 pi gives you 1 pi. Uh, so once you know you're in this position, then it's fairly simple. Cosine is the x-coordinate, so the value I'm looking for is the square root of 2 over 2. Uh, 